So why is civilization so imperfect? Why is it full of disharmonies, corruptions of all sorts, personal strife? Well, the basic answer is simple. Civilization is a corruption of nature. It's really quite clear. Native people didn't have all the problems, personal and social, that we have. And disharmonies with nature that we have. Native is natural. Civilization is not natural. It is a corruption. It corrupts our own nature, our human nature, our native nature. But if this is so, what is civilization? It cannot be a natural evolution of nature. So what is it? It is a drama. A drama of consciousness. The spiritual drama we see mirrored in the native people's mythologies, mythologies of Greeks, Romans and all the others. The drama we see mirrored, mirrored in the modern religions of every type. At one side we have the spiritual, understanding of reality, and now we have the new understanding, the material, the scientific. That's the two ends of the scale, and we are caught in the middle, in this drama of consciousness. And we are the players in this drama. And there is truth and delusion everywhere. So we create our own truths nowadays, our own beliefs, belief systems, and our own self-delusions. Self-delusion is easier than truth. But is it better? Well, of course, it does matter. Because we should be living harmoniously, both within ourselves and with nature, and amongst ourselves, and we are not. So it matters a great deal. We are basically mythological creatures. Native peoples reflected truth through their mythologies, as do all the religions and spiritualities of the world. Now we have a new mythology, the mythology of materialism, the mythology created by science, scientific knowledge, which teaches us Darwinian, Darwinian evolution, that we are products of genes and DNA programming, and are basically just brains with bodies attached to function in certain ways. This is what science teaches. The world is full of scientific studies explaining human behaviour. Except it doesn't explain it at all. It just imposes its own mythology. Of DNA programming, natural selection. But if our essence is spiritual, is consciousness, Well, science cannot comprehend that. It cannot accept that. Science only accepts the material, the physical, the physical universe. So we are today caught up in this dichotomy between the physical and the spiritual. This is clearly, clearly reflected in the world we see today. It's really quite obvious. If we can clear our minds of delusions. But then we have to give up the ego. And be prepared to 
forgo our lives of luxury and comfort. And worst of all, forgo our pet beliefs, our comfort beliefs. Be they material ones or religious ones. But of course, we prefer things the way they are. So, things just stay the same. Indeed, they get worse. They can only get worse as the material increasingly replaces the spiritual. We lose touch with ourselves, our native essence, our spiritual essence. So we become more disharmonious amongst ourselves, with nature, and within ourselves. And we see this clearly in the world today. It's clear. And on every level. Social and personal. But if we listen to the lies of science, we get lost in gobbledygook, psychobabble. Mythology of science, I should say. The psychobabble mythology of science. So we live in a fascinating modern world and a tragic modern world. We see the wonders of scientific knowledge explaining all the mysteries of the universe and the workings of the physical workings of the human body and everything else. And yet we see the unfolding tragedy of humanity, socially and personally. But part of our mythology is to pretend that this is human progress. This is the central ethos of civilization, human progress. Another mythology. But not all mythologies are mythologies of truth. For now we have the age of self-delusion. So ultimately the ethos of science and civilization must be rejected because it is not harmonious. It's not harmonious with our natural native self. It is not harmonious with nature. It really is obvious if we care to honestly look. The whole essence of nature is, revolves around balance and harmony. The modern way creates imbalance and disharmony everywhere. So what can we do about it? Well, we can't change the world. After all, this drama is far bigger than any one of us. We can't change civilization the way it works, despite the constant efforts at so-called progress and improvement. Civilization works in the way it does, because that's the way it works, that's what it is. It can be no other way. It cannot be changed. You can tweak edges here and there. That's all. What we all can do, personally, is be on our own personal journey. For this, sea kayaking is excellent. Here, we can get in touch with nature. The essence of nature. The wildness of nature. The coastal strip. We can seek communion with that wildness, that natural essence, and then find the greater meanings therein. Amongst the ordinary things like seagulls, for example, or everything. Yeah, kayak country. A communion with beauty and truth. Nature is beauty. Nature is truth. How can anyone argue with that? So 
I'm seeking connection with nature is an excellent way of seeking harmony and balance within ourselves. Not as a tourist superficial buzz of tourism and wildlife tourism. That is not connection with nature. Even less so is it watching nature programs on TV. Oh, you have to get out there, away from the noise and buzz and mindsets of the modern world and connect with that essence, that beauty, that truth. Silence. Leave behind technology. Seek that truth in the silence of nature. 